here we have our radio and we're gonna look in a little more detail at the connection between the radio and your computer that's running WinLink in there. So you need to have some kind of a physical and or virtual interface between your radio, your computer, and all the way into, into WinLink. From your radio, you have two basic paths. You have your receive path, which is going to be receiving the signals directly into the computer. And you have the transmit path, which is gonna go from your computer back down to your radio in order to, to send that traffic. In general, on the receive path, you're going out of your radio's speaker and into your computer's microphone. And then on the transmit path, you're going out of your computer speaker and into your radio's microphone. And this takes a little bit of getting used to of how this signal path is actually going, but it actually does make a lot of sense. Now, how that path goes along, oftentimes you're making the connection into a sound card of some kind. And for VARA, you really do need a sound card in order to make this work. And there, because we all have sound cards built into our computers, the, the knee-jerk reaction that we all have is like, hey, can I just use the built-in sound card in my computer? Well, kind of, you can make it work, but it works a whole lot better if you have a interface that's in between those two. Because one of the things that you really need is you need a control circuit as well between your computer and your radio. And you can say, oh yeah, I know I can use, I need to be able to control the push to talk button that's in here. And of course you can use the box feature on your, on your radio in order to make that automatically control happen. So it opens up your radio and sends the, sends the traffic out. However, having an actual control circuit and a controllable uh, device that's in between those two really makes a big difference, especially for emergency communicators, where you want that message to be able to go out with the least impact that you've got. And there are a couple of ways of being able to do this. First, there's some modern radios that have a USB port right on the radio and they have a built-in sound card. I'm gonna be demonstrating this today with my ICOM 705 and I'm gonna show you how this path goes over just a single cable. Alternatively, you have radios that have some kind of a data port associated with them. This might be a round DIN connector, it could be a DB9, it could be a variety of other different ports. There's several of them out there. And in those cases, if you're using one of those radios, then what you need is you need some kind of other interface, some kind of other USB sound card to go in between the two. Uh, we've, we've oftentimes talked about the um, the signal link, and we'll we'll demonstrate that uh, a little bit as well. Uh, W0D is going to be just some going to be talking about the the signal link and how that's set up. But at a very high level, the way that the the signal link actually works, uh, you have uh, what makes it so nice for doing amateur radio. First of all, it's, it's this external interface. It's pretty bulletproof. You can make the signal link work with pretty much any amateur radio that's out there. So if you're going to buy one device, this is generally the one to the one to get. You've got hard dials on the front for being able to adjust your transmit and your receive and a delay. Uh, if you need to make any fine tune adjustments, it's right on the outside. You don't have to mess around with software or anything like that. It uh, it's pretty bulletproof to be able to set that up right on the front of the device. On the back of the device, you've got one port for your radio connection, and that's going to be some kind of a custom cable that you need between a generic signal link and your particular radio. So you could get one signal link and then work with multiple different radios uh, uh, using just different cables that you either purchase or you make yourself. You then have a USB connection that connects the sound device into the computer. Now, what makes the the um, signaling kind of so special is down inside of the guts of it, there is a, a little uh, circuit board and you either use little small jumper wires and little wires and it comes with the signal link and you put in uh, the, the wires in a particular pattern based on your particular radio and it will make the signal link talk to, to your radio. They also have uh, these little modules that you can buy and they look something like something like this. They're little teeny tiny chips and you can get these specific for your radio and you can just pop it onto the chip and it does all the jumpering for you. I bought this 
uh, after I or I ordered this when I ordered my signal link for the first time. And you can see I've never even installed it because once I did the jumpers, I was like, well, I don't have to do this. So this is now just a demo uh, device for me at this point. Um, it does make it a little bit easier uh, than having to, to do the jumpers yourself. But uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know that it's really worth it. It's pretty easy to just do those to do those jumpers. So now we've got our radio and we've got some kind of USB interface and there's several others. Uh, Dan's gonna talk about a few others as, as well besides the signaling. But ultimately what you're doing is you're connecting your radio through this device into a USB port on your PC. And then from there, we need to follow the rest of the signal chain in order to get inside of WinLink. And so the next piece that happens that you've got to set up and you've got to configure. And this is a part that a lot of us miss is you've got to go into the sound control panel for Windows and you've got to select the correct uh, audio codec. You've got to make a couple of setting changes in there. We'll talk about what those are in just a second. Once you get Windows talking properly all the way to your USB sound card, whatever that happens to be, and your radio, the next one is then you're going to configure VARA so that it talks to your Windows sound control panel to the proper input and output settings. And there's a couple of other settings. We'll walk through those in a few seconds. From there, you connect VARA directly into to WinLink. And once you establish this signal chain, then you'll, you'll be all set ready to be able to go. Um, one of the things I always uh, like to say is when you're troubleshooting is, is it plugged in? And the, the question of that, is it plugged in, is not just a physical connection. Is your radio physically plugged in to the signaling? Do you have the right cabling? Do you have the right settings inside of the signal link and the right cable connection to your radio? Do you have the right settings inside of your radio for those two to talk? Are they plugged in? Is your signal link plugged into your computer? Once you get the signal link plugged into the computer, is Windows talking properly to your USB sound device, whatever that happens to be? Then is VARA talking properly to Windows? And is then is VARA talking properly to uh, your WinLink connection? And so you really do have to follow that entire signal path all the way through in order to make sure that you can successfully use the transmit functions and the receive functions with VARA. Explain something.